I'm Kathy Thomas, and I'm with the executive chef of Cucina Inoteca at Irvine Spectrum, Lulu de Rouen. And Lulu makes a dynamite risotto. She's okay. going to share her secrets. What's one thing that's at the heart of making risotto? I believe uh, it's the last bit of love you put into the risotto, right. and that we call is cheese. So we have Parmesan, mascarpone, butter, whipped cream. Those to me is what makes that ending risotto. And plus, when you start it, don't walk away from it. Don't walk away. Don't walk away. So we're going to start with a little bit of our olive oil. Mm -hmm. Our pan's on medium high. We don't want any color in our onions. So we're going to sweat these down. We're going to cook this down so they're completely translucent. So we're going to toast our rice because when you toast the rice, you break the outside uh, cells of the rice, so it's actually be able to absorb the parm shock evenly. And right now, as we deglaze, we're gonna start to see the bottom of the pan become very creamy as the starches are starting to break down. Mm -hmm. Here we have uh, Parmesan stock. Uh, of course, you can use water or chicken stock at home. Uh, we like to use Parmesan stock at the restaurant uh, because it brings so much more flavor to the dish. With risotto, it's one of those things that you constantly are adding it. You don't want to add a lot of stock and have it reduce and boil. You want to keep mm -hmm. adding just enough to it's absorbing like wet sand. And will you share the restaurant secret with us about how you can do part of this in advance? Yes. We cook it about 60% of the way. We take a sheet pan, cover it with plastic wrap. Right, and you spread it spread out. Spread it out. And I always use a spatula and cut diamonds into it. Mm -hmm. That way the heat releases faster, so it cools oh, faster. Oh, good tip. And also, you always want to use the top shelf in your fridge because right. all that heat's going to rise and cook what's ever above it. I see you have some beautiful fresh mushrooms. Yes, as a risotto is cooking on the stove, uh, we're going to start our mushrooms. We start by slicing them in half and then we score them for an even cooking. Uh, and plus it's a beautiful way to present them. We start them in a smoking hot pan. You want to hear them hit the pan. And then later we're going to add our oyster mushrooms. The oysters take half the time so you don't want to have one mushroom be completely overcooked and the other one al dente. We're actually going to finish the risotto with some fresh English peas that I shucked earlier. They're gorgeous but as a home cook, can I use frozen? Yes, of course. All right, it's cheese time. We're gonna start with a little bit of our butter, a little bit of our mascarpone, and we're just gonna work this in. And then when you add the Parmesan, it's gonna pull it all together. It's kind of like a Italian glue. <laughs> and then we're gonna finish with a little bit of our whipped cream. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's deadly. This just looks so good. <laughs> And there is our risotto. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank Lou, you. For sharing all your secrets. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Here's a quick tip from Melissa's. Roasting asparagus builds so much delicious flavor. It's easy to do. You want to take the asparagus and spread it out on a rimmed baking sheet. Drizzle on a little bit of olive oil and then simply roll it around to, to coat it lightly. And then just a little bit of kosher salt and into a preheated 450 degree oven in the bottom rack. About eight minutes till it's tender and nicely caramelized. Okay, onto the plate. And then one of the king of cheeses, burrata. And I like to open it up on the plate so the creamy center shows. And then just a little simple lemon tarragon vinaigrette, and a little gray sea salt, and then a nice grind of pepper, and a few little cherry tomatoes. Easy, roasted asparagus. The fruit and vegetable aisles are filled with so much potential. Try something new, have an adventure.